Welcome back to another episode of The Vault. This time around, we're going to be looking at my friend Chris Philpott's brilliant take on the spelling plot. This is called Spellcaster, and I believe it is the simplest, fairest, and most direct version of this effect on the market. You spread out the deck of cards. There's no force here. They look at any card they want, and they think of one in their mind. They then scoop up the deck, cut it as many times as they want. They name their card and you never touch the cards. They spell down and of course on that last card they flip it over and it's the card that they just thought of. So this is just one more brilliant thing that Chris Philpott has, has put his thinking into. If you don't know who this guy is, he created the 100th Monkey, uh, which is a brand new principle in magic and mentalism and that's very hard to come by in this day and age. He doesn't need to hide behind big crazy uh, trailers with explosions and smoke and, and beautiful girls reacting and freaking out. Uh, he stands behind his magic and it's straightforward, it's direct, and it's always brilliant. You just have to look the stuff up and uh, understand that there's some next level thinking going on here all the time with Chris Philpott. And Spellcaster is no different. I know you're going to love it. Uh, so enjoy. The very language of magic seems to be talking as much about writing or art as it is about supernatural events. A grimoire, for example, the Book of Spells, is simply a fancy way of saying grammar. Indeed, to cast a spell is simply to spell. One of the classic plots of card magic is a card is selected, lost in the deck, and then the magician finds it by spelling the name of the card, dealing out one card for each letter. Now, it's a very common, popular trick, but it's, I love this trick because uh, it actually taps into some really ancient mythologies. Uh, the word spell. The word spell uh, can mean to spell something or a magic spell. And we think of them as completely separate meanings now, but they were one and the same ones. Uh, a word like abracadabra, which is Aramaic for I create by speaking, uh, it actually was, they often spelled out that word to unleash its magical powers. Words are incredibly magical. In the ancient world, I think they still are. I mean, you look at creation myths from around the world, so many myths begin the universe itself with the word. And God said, in the beginning was a word. That's a lot of heft for a card trick. <laughs> so, we're going to do this, but I'm not going to have you choose a card. Uh, 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 and I'm not going to manipulate this with sleight of hand. We're going to keep it as simple as and impossible as it could possibly be. Uh, I want you to just think of a card. Just think of any card. And I'll look away. Got it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now what I would like you to do is I would like you to cut the card several times. Cut. And complete the cut. I want you to have no idea where the card is. Complete the cut. Good. Do you know where the card is in the deck? No, I'm good. Okay. Would you pick it up and put it in your left hand so you can deal the cards? Okay. Now, let's just go over this. You've thought of a card. Mm -hmm. One of 52. There's no way I could know what you card you were thinking of. And you don't know where it is in the deck. No. Okay. We're going to have you spell it out. One card for every letter in the name of the card, and it will be on the last card you deal, the S. That will be your card. Not before, not after, that card. Okay? Okay. Okay, well, what was the name of your card? Two of hearts. Two of hearts. Okay, so please spell it out. Right there, face up. T. W. O. O. F. H. R-T-S. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. That's Spellcaster. Thanks, baby. You might be better. Yeah, hi. <laughs> but she's not a stooge. <laughs>